السلام عليكم شباب Before we begin the talk, alhamdulillah, we can have a whole loss, but um, this is just something we'd like to mention, is that the Yomai, part of the Yomai is that, that we have the general da'wah activity that we do, and on top of that, we also have a division of the Yomai called Yomai Outreach. And this is for any humanitarian cause that's outside the basic da'wah that we do. And one project that we're working on during the month of Ramadan is to raise $50,000 for Africa. $50,000, this is for the famine that's happening in Africa. I'm pretty sure everyone is aware of what's happening in Africa. There's about something like 11 million people that are suffering from starvation. So this is a project that we're working on, and inshallah, all the money collected tonight will be for that cause. And we're also accepting zakat money, because it's going to Muslims and they fall under the category of zakat. So if you don't have your zakat with you today, you can give it to us tomorrow, the day after, any time during Ramadan. So I don't want to take too much of your time because I know during the month of Ramadan everyone knows that they should be paying as much charity as possible. So please brothers, for the sake of Allah, for the sake of your sins being forgiven, and for, for the sake of the brothers and our brothers and sisters that are dying from starvation, or we our fridges are too full to fit any more food, for all this sake, please dig deep and put all that money tonight. Inshallah for the sake of the, our brothers and sisters in Africa. And like I said, we are accepting zakat, so if you don't have money tonight, you can come to me or you can come to Brother Firas in the back with the yellow vest. We're accepting the money, inshallah. Just like a word. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah, we'll make salat ala rasulullah. Just quickly speaking of fridges, I remember one time one of the ulama he said that one of the worst things to ever hit a Muslim woman was the refrigerator. <laughs> so I'm thinking the refrigerator, I'm not worried about it. I said to him, please explain. He says to me before the Muslims used to make their food, and whatever was Whatever was more than what they needed, they used to give it out to, to the neighbors and give it out to the community. Today they put it in the fridge until it goes off and then they throw it in the bin. Well, he says the uh, worst thing they do is to do. Um, just the only, inshallah, well, just touch on the month of Ramadan, alhamdulillah. Every single one of us in the weeks upcoming towards the month of Ramadan, we've all been hearing about the month of Ramadan and that this is the month of worship, this is the month of Ibadah, this is the month of the Qur'an, this is the month of... SubhanAllah, this is the month where every single one of us needs to step it up and march. This is the month where we disconnect from the world around us and we connect to Allah subhanahu wa This is the month where you and I enter into extreme Ibadah between us and between Allah subhanahu wa This is not the month of gatherings, this is not the month of feasting, this is not the month of Musa Salam. This is not the month of hanging out and going out to coffee lounges and having a gila. This is the month that you and I we connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the month where this is the month like no other. You pray like you've never prayed before. You read Quran like you've never read before. And we also make dhikr like we've never made before. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says that verily we have ordained fasting upon you so that you may attain taqwa, piety. Umar ibn al-Khattab one time he asked one of the companions, I think it was uh, Umayyad ibn Ka'ar, Umayyad ibn Ka'ar, he says to him, what is taqwa? So the companion says to him, Ya Amir al-Mu'minin, have you ever in your life walked through a field that had thorny plants? He says to me, yes I have. He says to him, what did you do when you walked through? He says to him, I lifted up my garment and I was very cautious as I was walking through the field so that the thorns would have hit my clothing. He says to me, yeah, I what we need, this is taqwa. When you and I, we lift up our garments and we're cautious as to how we walk through this world. We make sure that we do not fall into the sins that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us to stay away from. 
So Allah SWT, he says that verily I have made fasting or then on you so that you may attain taqwa. But why do you want to need taqwa? SubhanAllah, he, the one, the individual that can verily, the one who can truly fast for Allah SWT, the one who can truly attain taqwa within his life, then this is the individual, the Muslim that can truly fast for Allah, this is the Muslim that can truly live for Allah SWT. Because this is how Allah SWT wants you to live. To attain taqwa, to stay away from evil, to enjoy that which is good. So why do I need to learn how to truly live for Allah? Because only he who truly lives for Allah is he who can truly die for Allah Azza And we all want to die for Allah Azza in this day. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give myself and give you guys and give the ummah taqwa inshaAllah. One of, one of the worships that you and I can engage in within this month is dhikr. And dhikr more or less is to be in the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And dhikr is the sort of worship that you can do wherever you are, in whatever state that you're in. Right? So, whatever spare time we have, we can fill that time up with dhikr. And when you and when you engage yourself in dhikr, then you're connecting yourself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're gaining rewards. And this is a worship that a lot of us, we tend to forget about, we tend to neglect. And there's mountains, mountains of ashes sitting here, man. So much to gain, and yet we turn our backs on it. Rasulullah sallallahu says in a beautiful hadith narrated by Abu Huraira, I'll do my best to say it in the Arabic, it's very, very easy. Wallahi, if you learn it, you feel, you feel a lot better. Rasulullah sallallahu says, Kalimatan, khafifatan, ala lisan, fakilatan, fil mizan, habibatan, ila rahman. Subhanallah bihamdi, subhanallah ladi. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says very two words. They lie on the tongue, but they're heavy on the scale. And they're loved by Allah Azza wa Jal. What are they? SubhanAllah wa bihamdi. SubhanAllah wa I heard one time one of the scholars he was saying, he was explaining it all. What is meant by heavy on the scales? Let's let's sort of try to paint a picture. Just, yani, just how heavy is SubhanAllah behind this SubhanAllah Ali. This scholar is of the opinion that it is so heavy that no matter how heavy you imagine it to be, on the Day of Judgment it's going to be heavier. So it's not limited. However heavy you imagine it to be, how heavy do you want it to be? As heavy as a car? As heavy as a mountain? What if it's as heavy as Australia? He says, no matter how heavy you imagine it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you more than that of which you imagine. Imagine the time that has passed you by where you've done nothing and you have could have filled up your time with subhanAllah behind him, subhanAllah behind him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that when he ascended into the heavens from the beautiful journey of Isra al Maharaj, he says that in one of the heavens he bumped into our Prophet Sayyidina Ibrahim. I'm cutting it short here. And more or less when Sayyidina Ibrahim, when he met Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says to him, Ya Rasulullah, give salam to your ummah on my behalf. And it's sunnah, whenever we hear this, we return the salam to Alayhi wa sallam. So, our father Ibrahim is giving us advice. He's telling Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, tell your ummah that very heaven, the land of heaven has already been divided. And that its soil is soft and its water is sweet. And the seeds for the trees in heaven is subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. So this is the advice that our Father is giving you on. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. That's really two trees for you. And there are many, many hadith, some weak, some shine, as far as to what sort of tree are we talking about? One of them says that it would take an Arabian horse a hundred years and it wouldn't even cross its shadow. SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha These are the little things that you and I can engage in in this month. You're in the car, you're going somewhere. Engage in dhikr. You're sitting down, you're waiting for the salat. Engage in dhikr. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, 
He says, Verily, I met istighfar, meaning he says, Astaghfirullah, repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In one hadith, he says 70 times a day. In another, he says 100 times a day. Expressing that he's the Lord of Allah. Look at it. Engage yourself. The remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ayat al Kursi. Verse number 255, yeah? I think it's verse number 255 for Sufi al chapter 2. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he says, whoever reads Ayat al-Kursi, after every prayer, five prayers, after every prayer you read Ayat al-Kursi, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is telling you and I that the only thing that will stand between you and I, the only thing that will stand between you and paradise is death. So all you got to do is die, man, and that's where you're going. <laughs> Ayat al Kursi. Small but powerful. Small but powerful. Making, making, yeah, and just making salat on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Whoever makes salat on me, Allah will make salat on you ten times, man. Ten times. That time before Maghrib is a special time, man. Engage. Connect yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make salat on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the month for it. This is the month that really we need to hit a heart. Dhikr, dhikr, as much as you can. You, we need to get to dhikr. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he says that verily, whoever remembers Allah, whoever remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on his own, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembers you on his own. And if you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a gathering, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remember you in a better gathering, gathering of angels. You know, being in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being in dhikr, you know, subhanAllah, in every worship you do in Islam, you need to have intention. Can I make wudu if I don't have intention? Can I pray if I don't have intention? Yeah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, wherever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being mentioned, wherever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being mentioned, so say he, for instance, verily the tranquility will come down. Look, I've been talking about Allah for less than five minutes and already you feel different. Already you're thinking different. Already your perspective of tomorrow has changed. We've been talking about Allah for a couple of minutes. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, whoever gathers to mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, verily the angels will join us in this gathering. It's a long hadith, it's a beautiful one, and then they go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But more or less at the end of this gathering, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have forgiven every single one of us our sins. But that's not the amazing thing. The amazing thing is, is that there's probably one of us now who's thinking, man, hasn't this guy finished yet? He's doing my thing. <laughs> right? Let's, let's, let's be honest, right? You know, sometimes, sometimes you, you go to like a, 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 you know, like you go to a nice talk, and then the brother carries on, and then you doze off, and then you start sleeping. Right? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, even that individual man, if you came here with no intention whatsoever to listen to the talk, you've come here with no intention whatsoever. You could be a drug dealer waiting outside man, and you're waiting for one of the brothers because he owes you money. But because you're next to this gathering, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive him his sins as well. This is the amazing thing about it. We stand out, we stand out to the creation of the heavens, like the star stands out in the sky. So we need to engage in the Engage in the good. Do not let a moment pass you by. SubhanAllah bihamdi. SubhanAllah bihamdi. Heavy on the scales, man. Heavy. And there's two types of the good. There's the general the which is, you know, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, Allah, Allah, Allah. And then you've got the specific the good. What do I say when I enter the toilet? What do I say when I come out of the toilet? What do I say before I eat? What do I say after I eat? All of this stuff is worship. This is why Ibadah Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi is giving you and I ammunition against you, against Shaitan. When you come to you say, Bismillah, Shaitan doesn't eat with you anymore. When you come to wear your clothes, Bismillah, Shaitan doesn't get dressed with you anymore. When you enter the house, when you leave the house, when you enter the masjid, when you leave the masjid. All of this dhikr, Allah Subhanahu is giving you, uh, sorry, Rasulullah Sallallahu is giving you and I ammunition to protect ourselves. Engage in it. This is the month to learn it. This is the month to learn it. This is Yani, Allah, I, can't, I can't find the words to express the importance of it. And just think back at all the time that has passed us by, man. 
You jump on the train, you go in town to the city, and that's 40 minutes. What did you do in that 40 minutes, really? You can't read Quran, you don't have the Quran handy on you, engage in dhikr. Commit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make dua. Make dua. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that when a brother makes dua for his brother, listen to this. When a brother makes dua for his brother, an angel will stand by your side. And for everything you ask for the brother, the angel will say, and to him, Allah. So if I'm asking Jannah for the brother, this angel is going to stand by my side and tell Allah and give angel to him as well. <laughs> this angel is going to say, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give paradise to him as well. So then, hey, your brother, jump on. And if the brother's not saying to really tick you off, man, and you want to start laying into him, stop, <laughs> stop. And then my love give you hold a man. <laughs> the sister's upstairs. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So you say what? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you more. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you firdaus al Huh? And this angel will stand by your side and you tell him what? And to him is all. And to him. I'll finish it off by my hands. Unbelievable, you know. We hear about Khalid ibn al Walid, the soul of Allah Azza wa Jalla. In one of the battles against the Romans, I believe it was under the Khilafah of Abu Bakr of Iran. They, they were fighting the Romans, and this, oh, and this, and this was massive, man. You know, Bedouins, people used to eat dead carcasses on the floor. Huh? Now they're fighting the greatest empire the world ever knew. So, and Khalid al Walid was the leader, and the Muslims needed him, yani, of course. So, anyway, one time after one of the battles, it was night. <coughs> And then the armies came to rest. The Muslims were on one side, the non-believers were on the other. So Khalid bin Walid man, he couldn't sleep. He jumps on his horse and the Muslims are saying, where are you going? He goes, well, I'm going to the non-believers. They're going to walk on your own. He goes, me on my own. Yeah, more or less. <laughs> what do you mean on your own? That's craziness, man. That's, that's, that's suicidal. And he went. He went. And he went to the gathering of the enemy at night and he walked around them. He walked through them. He walked amongst them on his horse and he came back. And the Muslims said to him, man, what were you? weren't you scared? He says to them, did you not hear the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? That verily the difference between the one who remembers Allah and the one who doesn't is like the living and the dead. So how can the dead harm the living? Yaqeen, man. Yaqeen. This, this was a lip service. In the heart, but how can the dead harm the living? So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us all of the living, inshallah, and we do our best to engage, engage in the prayer. Inshallah, right after the prayer, um, right after Salat al Butr, we will need to roll up the carpets. The boys, they're going to have a Saturday night program, will still be taking place, which is sports. All of you guys are welcome to stay. There's going to be sports, indoor soccer, some footy outside. So, inshallah. Directly after Salat al Mutar, Qaidi asked all of you guys to leave. We do need to wrap up. But all of you, not leave as in jump in the car and leave, but leave so we can.